This recording is for the 2021 National Airport's Rental Car Supplier Diversity Outreach Virtual Webinar for the New Orleans Airport. This event is titled Doing Business with the Louis Armstrong International Airport, and it's hosted by the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Office. This webinar took place on April 27, 2021 and is being provided on the airport's YouTube channel and for future sharing. The webinar agenda covers a range of topics, including doing business with the New Orleans Airport, how to apply for DBE certification in our region, how did we do it, North Terminal and MSY success with prime contracting in the ACDBE program, Understanding opportunities to do business with the airport and non car rental and capital projects. Business opportunities and airport facilities. Understanding local opportunities with rental car suppliers and the webinar will end with a thank you from the disadvantaged business enterprise office. We will begin with the welcome from the director of aviation. Greetings, I'm Kevin Dolio, Director of Aviation for the Louis Armstrong New Orleans International Airport. We're very pleased to participate in the Airport Rental Car Supplier Diversity Outreach Day. We're always working to increase opportunities with existing and potential DBEs. Uh, to support the national efforts going on today, our team has put together a great set of presentations about how to do business with the New Orleans Airport and you'll also get to hear from some of our current DBE firms uh, as they share their experiences. To kick things off, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our airport, how we're responding to the COVID-19 pandemic, and what's in store for the future. We are by far, MSY is by far, uh, the largest airport within a 350-mile uh, radius. Uh, if you're flying into or out of the state of Louisiana, about 85% of all passengers do so uh, through MSY. Uh, our catchment area or our reach, we draw passengers from as far north as Jackson, uh, as far east as Mobile, Pensacola, and uh, just about to Lake Charles to the west. Before COVID-19, uh, we were experiencing or enjoying record growth. Uh, we were the fifth fastest growing airport in America from 2008 to 2018. That's amongst the top 60 airports in the country. And so we had significant passenger growth in that time. Our nonstop destinations grew significantly and employments were steadily, steadily increasing year after year. Uh, in 2019, we set an all-time record of 13.6 million passengers, so we were doing quite well. We had 16 airlines uh, serving the market uh, to 55 uh, destinations, including of which eight of those were international. And you can see the list of airport airlines here. I won't take through that entire list, uh, with Air Transit uh, being the newest air carrier to come on board prior to COVID-19. This aerial was taken uh, shortly before we opened the new airport terminal. The terminal opened in November of 19. Uh, this is about the August, September time frame when it was pretty well complete. And uh, this depicts, gives, gives you a good view of the various components of the overall structure on the north side of our airfield. So along comes COVID-19 uh, in March of 2020. And of course, it had a significant impact on us as it did the rest of the nation's airports. Uh, this, uh, this is a pretty graphic depiction uh, of what happened to our employment uh, during COVID, uh, especially as you note, the blue lines here uh, are 2019 uh, employments. The green represents 2020. You can see the significant drop uh, to the bottom uh, in April of uh, 2020. In fact, uh, we typically would run on a slow day 15 to 16,000 people a day through our checkpoint. 
on a heavy day, maybe 25 to 27,000. Uh, in April, uh, the, at the height of this, uh, we were seeing days as low as uh, in the 400s uh, in the total passengers uh, processed through the checkpoint. And I don't think one day in April of 2020 exceeded 1,000 people through the checkpoint. So pretty severe impact. We responded in a number of ways uh, on, the, uh, on the financial side. Uh, we reduced a lot of our budget, cut things out, uh, eliminated uh, travel, uh, and hiring freeze, uh, just a number of actions taken in that regard. But also we recognized uh, that the traveling public needed to be kept safe uh, as they moved through our facility and feel safe uh, as they moved through our facility in order to start encouraging folks to use the facility and have some confidence in the potential to travel safely. Uh, so we launched the MSY Travel Ready Plan uh, shortly after uh, COVID occurred, uh, and it addressed a number of issues. It was just a strategic uh, relationship with our partners uh, in the airport, and we were all doing different things to ensure the safety of the traveling public. And our four key areas uh, were physical distancing, uh, so there's markers throughout the uh, airport uh, on the floor, floor markings, wherever people queue in the facility. Uh, we marked our elevators and, and placed a capacity limit on our elevators of four people uh, per car, uh, where we have banks of escalators, maybe four or five or six ex escalators side by side. Uh, we took advantage of closing uh, certain escalators to create spacing uh, between the, the escalators for physical distancing. Uh, also installed physical barriers uh, throughout the facility. You'll see plexiglass at all of the ticket counters, at gate hole podiums, uh, and other key spots throughout the facility, uh, checkout counters at, at our concessionaires, and also the TSA installed uh, some plexiglass barriers. Uh, we installed uh, hand sanitizing stations uh, throughout the facility, and as required by federal law, even prior to the federal requirement, uh, we, were we were requiring face masks uh, in our facility. Uh, believe it or not, through this period, uh, very recently, we've uh, two new airlines have come on board. Uh, we have. Uh, Silver Airways, uh, which uh, will begin twice weekly service to Jacksonville, Florida in June. Uh, Boutique Air started service last week, uh, flying two round trips to, uh, to Greenville, Mississippi on Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Uh, American Airlines uh, announced they'll launch service to uh, Austin uh, in May. Uh, Austin's not a new destination for us, but it's a new destination for Americans from here. Uh, and our first international service has returned, uh, Southwest nonstop flight to Cancun uh, initiated uh, service on April the 17th. So we're happy to see that return and we're looking forward to more coming. We, uh, we also had some recent accomplishments uh, through this period. Uh, we were ranked uh, by USA Today as the third best large airport uh, in America amongst the 10 best Reader's Choice Travel Award uh, program uh, for 2021. Uh, we also, due to a lot of the measures we're taking in the airport, we were awarded the best hygiene measures in North America uh, by ACI World uh, in their uh, airport service quality program. Uh, we received our GBAC STAR accreditation uh, through ISA, the International Sanitary Supply Association, which really is third party validation of the measures we're taking in our facility to keep folks safe uh, as they use the facility. And also, we, uh, we were awarded the uh, Best Overall Public Relations Program from ACINA uh, and five uh, Public Relations Society of America, New Orleans chapter awards uh, for campaigns for the opening of the terminal and uh, COVID-19 preparations. So we've been quite busy, quite active, and received recognition for great work we've done uh, through this period. 
Uh, we're very committed uh, to our DBE program uh, and involving DBEs uh, in our operation and providing opportunity. Uh, in 2020, we paid out $9.4 million uh, to DBE firms, and that's outside uh, of our construction program. Uh, when you look at the new terminal that I reflected on earlier in the presentation uh, and the construction of it, uh, over the life of that project, uh, we paid $323 million to uh, DBE firms who participated in the program. Going forward, uh, in 2021, uh, we have goals, certain goals we've set. Uh, of course, as the COVID-19 um, era continues and, and things change, uh, we'll continue deployment of different measures to ensure the safety of the traveling public. Uh, Taxiway G West uh, is a project that's a very important uh, uh, project for the airport, uh, supported by the FAA. Uh, we'll be moving through that project uh, through the construction phase in 2021. Uh, and we'll have most of it completed by uh, year end. Uh, we're about to initiate a master plan uh, process. Uh, we're in the process of selecting a firm now uh, that will uh, complete a master plan for us, and we will initiate the, um, the master planning process this year. Uh, the South Campus, with the move to the North Terminal, of course, it creates opportunity for us uh, on the south side of the airport where the old uh, facility exists. Uh, we'll continue our planning efforts on that side uh, and maybe have some initial implementation of uh, some activities on the south side, but we will be very mindful as, uh, as we redevelop the South Campus. Uh, and of course, uh, we're committed to DBE and SLDBE participation, uh, and we will meet or exceed our participation goals. Uh, on the air service front, life's changed. Uh, with COVID-19 is, is typically before the COVID period. Uh, one, uh, in the air service development arena, you were typically out uh, trying to attract new service uh, to the airport and educating airlines as to potential markets that are being missed from here. Uh, with COVID-19, uh, the focus shifts a little bit. Uh, it becomes uh, very important to uh, put a lot of effort into retention of the air service you had prior to COVID-19. So there's a, there's a good bit of effort, good bit of effort in that regard now uh, in retaining air service, but we won't lose sight of potential new opportunities going forward. As I indicated, with, uh, two new air carriers just started service uh, in the market. And, uh, and as always, uh, anything we do, even as we work uh, through the pandemic, uh, we look to move through this period in a way that we keep our cost for employment uh, as low as possible or very competitive uh, for the air carriers as they utilize our facility. So that's, that's a quick shot of MSY. And, uh, and now I invite you to uh, stay tuned and enjoy uh, the rest of the presentation from MSY. Greetings. Next, we'll have a presentation on the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Program. Hello, my name is Stephen Pinchio, and I'm here to talk about DOTD's Disadvantaged Business Enterprise and Small Business Element Certification. DBE Certification, a Disadvantaged Business Enterprise is a for-profit business that is at least 51% owned by one or more individuals who are both socially and economically disadvantaged. Eligibility requirements for the certification are stated in 49 CFR Part 26, and there are six requirements that must be proved by a DBE applicant. In the next slide, we're going to go into the first requirement, and that's that the individual is socially or economically disadvantaged. And that means a disadvantaged owner is a U.S. citizen and meets the federal definition of socially and economically disadvantaged as defined by 49 CFR Part 26 
67. Presumptive groups include women, Black Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, Asian Pacific Americans, subcontinent Asian Americans, and other minorities found to be disadvantaged by the regulations or an individual found to be socially and economically disadvantaged on a case-by-case basis. Rules for determining social and economic disadvantage also include extending the treatment of assets held by married couples to include domestic partnerships and civil unions that are legally recognized under state law. And on the next slide, on number two, personal net worth cannot exceed 1.32 million. The business size standard, uh, that's the three year average of gross receipts cannot exceed 26.29 million. Obviously ownership, uh, independence, uh, a firm cannot rely, this DBE applicant firm cannot rely on another business to operate or function. And of course, the management and control of the business must be by the socially and disadvantaged, economically disadvantaged owner. On the, on the next slide, we're going to be looking at the DBE webpage at DOTD, and it talks about uh, the, the DBE certification program, in particular, the Unified Certification Program. And this is a program where uh, DOTD, uh, in partnership with Louis Armstrong International Airport, the Regional Transit Authority of New Orleans, uh, have combined forces to implement a uniform certification uh, procedure. And this eliminates the need for applicants to apply multiple times in multiple jurisdictions. And it also provides for a uh, the reciprocity in other states. So. If you're certified in Louisiana, you can go to Florida, Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, and uh, apply for interstate certification there, as well as firms that are in those states can apply for interstate certification with Louisiana. On the next slide, we have the actual um, web page that lists the various regions. We have two regions, region one, which is the new of the Baton Rouge office of DOTD, and in region two, we have the Louisiana um, I'm sorry, the Louis Armstrong International Airport, as well as the Regional Transit Authority, along with our DOTD office in Louis. Uh, this page also includes the link for the application, the work type list, the directory search. Now, I might mention, mention the directory search. That is a maintain a directory where uh, it lists all of our certified firms and what they're certified in. So primes can go there and research and see uh, what businesses are certified to do what things. So they, when they're looking for people to partner with, this is an excellent place for them to go. And on the next slide, the guidelines. Uh, we have a link on this page to the application itself, uh, mailing instructions, as well as the personal net worth form that needs to be filled out. And on the next slide are some DBE certification guidelines. Uh, this is the first page of the application, kind of should I apply, how to apply, where to mail in my application. Um, and again, the application is meant to learn a bit more about your business. There's no trick questions, strictly questions about your business. Um, and, uh, it's a little tedious, but at DOTD, we do offer a supportive services uh, entity i.e. SJV and the Urban League of Louisiana, they will work with applicants and help them put together the packets for free of charge because it's a, it's a contract. We provide that service to uh, applicants. And again, um, my contact information is listed at the very end. Uh, feel free to contact, with, contact me about that and I'll be happy to provide those entities and names and contact numbers so they can help you put together your application. On the next slide, we're going to talk about SBE certification. That's the small business element program that was created to remedy past and current discriminations against SBE firms. The intention is to level playing field um, for economically disadvantaged individuals wanting to do business with DOTD on DOT uh, assisted projects. Again, this program uh, is different from DBE because, as I've mentioned in the next slide, the, the guidelines. Your personal net worth cannot exceed 1.32 million. Uh, three year annual gross receipts of 26.29. It's the same as with DBE. Uh, it must be a for profit. 
uh, must be at least 51% owned by one or more individuals that are economically disadvantaged. Uh, and the company meets the small business concern definition. But the difference is, the key difference, this program is race and gender neutral. So um, this is not like the DBE program. This program is race and gender neutral. So, but the key thing is you have to be a U.S. citizen. And on the next slide is the actual page for the SBE certification. And basically, this is a lot, these are a lot of the forms that will need to be filled out. Uh, it's not as long of an application, but needless to say, we still have to, uh, we have to have you fill in an application uh, before we review it. Uh, and again, um, a lot of the information may be duplicate, like some information you gather for the DBE application you're gonna need for this one. So by all means, keep a copy of your DBE application uh, because some information you, you'll need for the SBE portion of it. And on the next slide, just briefly, uh, it's an application slide that deals with the SBE application. Again, should you apply? And, and just questions just to kind of give you an idea of the flavor of what the application would be like. Again, it's not as long, maybe like six or seven pages, but now, needless to say, it does ask a lot of information about your business. And on the final slide, it's just my contact information. If you should have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you all today, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you very much. Our next session will be on prime contracting. Hello, and on behalf of our entire joint venture team, thank you for this opportunity to share insight gained on partnering with small businesses for success on the North Terminal project. What are some of the key successes with partnering with small businesses to achieve North Terminal outcomes? Thank you for that question. Um, one of the most important successful accomplishments we achieved was facilitating introductions those introductions turned into meaningful opportunities for the small and local business community. Um, our team's focus, it went beyond just meeting the diversity and inclusion goals, but helping to expand the ability for small businesses to now have past performance on major projects, setting them up for success in years to come. How can other local small businesses prepare to work on major capital projects similar to yours? That's a great question. Preparing to work on major projects may involve different approaches for different small businesses. However, I encourage all small businesses to understand the project requirements in terms of your insurance, bonding, even software that may be required for overall compliance monitoring. Continue to network not only with primes, but with each other. Stay engaged with your local chamber organizations and resource partners like AMAC. Oftentimes, major primes will collaborate with these organizations in preparing small businesses for the opportunity ahead. How can small businesses connect with the major prime on future airport contracting? I can't express enough the benefits of staying engaged and connected to your resources. Relationships are key to initiate an awareness of capacity and readiness to participate in upcoming opportunities. ACOM has equity, diversity, and inclusion champions throughout our organization, and we're continuously seeking ways to identify new small and diverse firms to support our work across our markets. Um, thank you again for this opportunity to connect, and my information is included in the slides. I look forward to staying engaged with each of you. Our next session will be on the ACDBE program. Great. So thanks for the time. Um, it is great to talk to you guys. Um, the first question we wanted to talk to you guys about was your path to becoming an ACDBE. So Leslie, if you want to start that off. Sure. Well, I became an ACDBE almost by accident. 
I was working in the rental car space with a client that was um, a regional rental car company that was acquired by Dollar Rent-A-Car. And I spoke at a car rental conference and someone from budget asked me if I would be interested in working with them on their in car rental insurance program. And I said, sure. While there, I was asked if I knew anything about being a certified business. And was I eligible? And I and I said, well, I don't know. What, are, you know. what is the eligibility? We went over it and I determined that I was. So they asked me if I would become certified because they said that would be helpful to them. So that was how the path began. And I started with the city of Tampa, then the Tampa airport, and eventually became certified in all 50 states in, and Puerto Rico and over 200 airports. How about you? Oh, well, our path, uh, I guess, to ACDBE was really start more so strategic and more so centered around the commercial um, side of things originally. So our path started off here in, in Las Vegas, Nevada, with McCarran Airport. And there was a lot of construction going on, and which was good. And during the heyday before the bubble burst. And so, you know, we were brought in under the OSIP program, really, um, the owner controlled insurance program. And really, that was our sort of pathway or footway into the ACDB portion of the program when it came to um, insurance in the airports. And from there, we've used that to obviously extend and move out into other um, avenues and working with other different partners. But, you know, it was more so strategic for us because we saw those opportunities coming up. And so we, you know, talked to the right different people at the airport. And because we were really one of few insurance agencies that really you know, fit that ACDB criteria in that sense. You know, um, you know, the path wasn't didn't have many road bumps. It's just a matter of going through it. Great, great. So obviously, both both firms. So Leslie Saunders uh, Insurance is an, a national firm based in Tampa, and um, Brands Benefits Consultants also has national clients, but focuses very much in the Las Vegas area. So in terms of you know, we we actually have some different paths. Um, uh, the firms have worked with New Orleans. So, um, Leslie, you want to talk a little bit about the work you've done with clients, our clients at the New Orleans airport? Yes. Over the years, um, I've worked with uh, most of the car rental concessions in the New Orleans airport. I conducted customer service training and um, other insurance training for Avis, Budget, Dollar, um, numerous other clients. And I have had uh, news and gift clients there, parking clients, restaurant clients. So we've been in and out of that airport um, many, many times over the years working with uh, mostly concessions. Great. And, and Quincy, I know that, well, the branch family actually has quite a bit of a, a customer relationship with the uh, New Orleans airport and the New Orleans area. Maybe we talk about how that works for you guys, for your family. Yeah, and I would say working with uh, the New Orleans Airport, really the working part um, is more personal for us because New Orleans is home for us. Um, so, you know, my, my father and my mother are both born and raised in New Orleans, you know, native as well. So we, as Leslie said, we've had a lot of coming and goings in that airport <laughs> for personal and for business reasons um, and a lot of different business connections there. Um, so that's why I guess the, the New Orleans Airport is, um, is important to us and, and really hits home and at the heart of what we do. Great. And so, um, you know, what about the opportunity? So, so we talked about how you guys got your ACDBE certifications. And in one case, it was kind of client specific. In another case, it was airport construction project specific, which certainly New Orleans um, has, has just come off of some really big projects with that. Talk about how you both have leveraged that certification to kind of grow your business even outside of your home geographical territory. There aren't many insurance agencies that are woman or minority owned, um, even fewer that are certified as ACDBEs, even in one state. And so when there's a need for participation on a, on a bid, uh, I get contacted by all the big brokers and I were, have learned to work in other areas. For example, I work on the Dulles Rail Project with one of the large brokers. I work on Tampa Airport with another one. Um, I'm working on Naples 
Florida airport was still another one. And over the years, um, I became involved with some of the large parking companies and do insurance and consulting for one of the largest, or did for one of the largest parking companies. And so you build that expertise. And, and then over the years, um, we, we have become uh, very knowledgeable in all the workings and operations of the, of the various airports and their consolidated parking arrangements and their valet parking and their, um, and their rental car facilities and all of the, the RFP processes and what's the right amount of insurance and the bonding and everything else. So I think we, we grew that expertise over 30 years of hard work. For you guys. Yeah, and I, and I guess, Craig, very similar to, you know, what Leslie has shared, you know, and I think for me, you know, getting the opportunity is one thing. What you do with the opportunity is a whole nother ball game. And similar to what Leslie's saying for us, you know, the opportunity came on the construction commercial side. But, you know, to your question, we've used that opportunity and we built upon that opportunity and expertise and that knowledge to leverage to where, you know, like she said, outside of the airport itself, you know, we've established some great relationships. We've done some, you know, huge projects on the strip and off the strip when it came to construction and, and benefits, you know, being one of one of our largest clients. So I think that's really been a, a game changer for us is really taking that experience and taking those certifications and now leveraging that and saying, okay, hey, to Leslie's point, we're here, we're ready to do business, you know, we're able to do business, but we can also back up the business that we're saying we can do. That's great. And so I'm actually going to turn my camera back on real quick because I, I was thinking spoiler alert. So since uh, AMAX actually, you know, sponsoring this rental car outreach event. And um, so I think another good piece about talking about the opportunities to do business over time is just uh, recently the Leslie Saunders Insurance Agency was acquired by Branch Benefits Consultants mm -hmm. and Quincy Branch. And you, we, we met, you talk about uh, opportunities to do business. We met Aubrey, actually, and I met three years ago um, to collaborate on a project for AMAC and AMAC members. And both firms have been longtime AMAC members. So certainly, um, as far as a plug goes, if you are a certified business or you want to be a certified business and you want to do business in the airport, there's no better association. Uh, to be a member of than AMAC, but I, I think, you know, if you guys would both talk about it, maybe Quincy, let's have switch the order a little and have you start, because I think the opportunities to do business and grow business, you know, we took two family businesses, two ACDBE certified businesses, and, and through a lot of hard work and leadership from you, we're able to merge these um, over the course of a year in COVID. So mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty cool story. There's not a lot of that going on. <laughs> so share with us. Both yeah. of you care with us that. Well, and, and, and Craig, I think you said it best first and foremost, you know, definitely want to make sure that we understand that you asked the question about leveraging and, you know, one of the things we leveraged our membership in AMAC. Um, and, and like you said, again, I think what Leslie and I are doing or embarking on from what we hear has never been done before in this space. Um, so, you know, we, we have our, our hurdles that we're, we're going through, but everything is fine and, and running smoothly. But to that point, I think you know, that's all about being strategic. Again, you know, Leslie and I both talked about it. You know, we both can see well into the future of what this thing can really do for legacy building, you know, for long term and longevity. And so the conversations for us to get to that point when we submitted the deal were just easy. That 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 was that was just, you know, iron out details. But I think it's more so the idea of, okay, how do you take two powerhouses, combine them and make them one, and utilize and bring together all the resources. And now take those resources and that and that combined institutional knowledge, those combined resources, and now go out and you know do what we were doing separately, but now do it together and do it better. So you know that's the promise and the the the, the vision that sort of I see with going forward and super excited about it. And to uh, to build upon what Quincy said, we you always want to be a member of your industries. Uh, trade associations, if you will. You have to, for a lot of reasons. You have to network, you want to give back, um, you, you recognize the value they bring. The Airport Minority Advisory Council is a unique organization. It is for the benefit of those businesses that are owned by women and minorities 
trying to build and grow and understand the ever-changing rules and fields of, of endeavor in airports. When you think about the businesses that exist today that didn't exist eight or 10 years ago, you know, I was coming um, to the airport, coming out of the airport yesterday, and there was this big cupcake machine that had fresh baked cupcakes that people were stopping and buying these cupcakes, you know, like crazy. What a beautiful little piece of equipment. Well, somebody owns that, and probably a woman or a minority owned firm. I remember when the first Starbucks opened, one of the early ones was in uh, Cincinnati. I used to go through that airport on purpose to get a Starbucks. Uh, so, the, the marketplace in airports is amazing and everybody there needs insurance and benefits and advising and everything else. But the hardest thing when you are a minority owned business is how do you get your equity out when you want to sell? You, what do you do? Most of them just go away because they can't find the right buyer. Well, through AMAC, just a stroke of, of luck that we met the branches and that we hit it off and realized we had a lot of things we could do together. Yeah. So you've got to go to these organizations. You've got to belong, participate, and network if you want to get the equity out of your business someday. And that's one of the parts of the ACDBE program that needs work, which I would hope to be able to help with because you just, you, you have to be able to get your equity for all your hard work at the end of the day family businesses so I'm getting uh, and pointers and you know for, for companies that you know have a service um, whether it's professional services like us or tangible um, maybe they have you know restaurant retail experience <coughs> kind of tips and pointers of you know how do you build relationships or how do you okay I've got this certification now how do I leverage this around the things that I do Leslie has a lot more wisdom in this question than I do, so I'm, I'm glad I'm going first. Um, but I, I think, Craig, to your question, it's no different than any other, you know, sales and or marketing, you know, person would do in, in your regular business. Um, one, I say again, you get the membership. Two, um, I think we talked about it several times. You find ways to how to maximize that opportunity. And a wise man told me years ago, you know, and, and that necessarily doesn't mean that if you walk into a room of 100 people, you have to meet all 100. You know, you identify, okay, the 10 people in the room that I need to meet, this is why they're gonna be beneficial to me or why I'm gonna be beneficial to them. And then from there, you make sure you meet those 10. So I think the same thing you talk about, you know, how do you leverage your business in AMAC or going forward with your ACDB certification? It's a matter of one, knowing your business and then understanding, okay, what do you bring to the table? And then finding those people that really can, you know, benefit from, you know, having a partnership with you. And then from there, I'm just being candid, you be relentless. <laughs> relentless in your pursuit. You pursue like nobody's business because, you know, hopefully the, what you can see here from Leslie, you know, in the business 30 plus years and myself, you know, being in the business that once you get in and get in your right lane, it pays off. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to add to that, you know, you're going to make mistakes along the way. My, my largest contract and now Quincy's largest contract is a car rental company. And when I first started doing business with them, I underpriced it. I was so excited to be offered the opportunity and I just let the excitement get away from me and I priced it way too low. And there were points when I was just gonna cancel the contract because I was losing money. And I didn't need to be doing this contract and losing money because I had other things that were much more lucrative and I could have survived quite nicely without it. But I stuck it out and I went to talk to senior executives and, and showed them where I was losing money. And believe it or not, they, they renegotiated the deal and they didn't have to. They renegotiated the deal and we've been partners for 25 years. And, and now Quincy's got a great relationship with them and is working with them. And that's what it's about in this program. If there's gonna be success and continuity in this program, people need to learn how to do these things. Sometimes you have to have the hard conversation. And if it is a partnership, you have to be able to go and say, look, I love you guys, but I'm just not making any money on this deal. And I don't think you would want me to do that and continue to be a partner who's losing money. So, well, how can we fix this? What can we do? So those are some of the things you learn along the way. And I think people um, like me who are, getting, who are getting out of the business now have to mentor younger people. And that's part of the situation here. 
I want to see this business be scaled by Quincy and his team in a way that I didn't didn't have the energy anymore to do. So I think there's great upside potential here, and I want to help with that, and I want to see it go to the next level. Our next session will be on airport non-car rental concessions opportunities. This section of the webinar is with the airport, and we have Ms. Allison Ogles, who's going to be talking about airport concessions and giving us more insight about the procurement process and opportunities to do business with the New Orleans for it. Um, thank you so much, Allison. Thank you. So I thought that we would talk about in questions to understand how to do business with the New Orleans airport. The first question I had is, can you explain a little bit about what ways local firms can do business with the airport? Um, what opportunities there may be? Um, the airport is owned by the city of New Orleans and they operate it through the New Orleans Aviation Board. So as a public um, enterprise department of the city of New Orleans, we do most of our procurement through the city's procurement office. Um, we conduct solicitations uh, for most business opportunities. Um, we do have some smaller opportunities that uh, we do in-house, um, and we do have um, opportunities in various areas around the terminal, um, including some licensing and permitting for off-airport um, companies like rental car companies. Thank you. And if I'm a local farm in the New Orleans area, um, sometimes we hear the term concessionaire or vendor firm. Um, is there a difference between like what a business's designation might be considered at the airport? For example, what it means to be a concessionaire. Um, is that a special term? Um, a concessionaire would be a company that is providing goods and services to the public at the airport. For instance, if you were flying um, out of our airport and while you were in the terminal, you visited one of our retail locations or one of the food and beverage locations, those would be concessionaires um, versus a vendor or a contractor could be someone who supplies the goods and services to an existing concessionaire or a tenant at the airport or even to the aviation board itself. For instance, um, office supplies, we buy from an office supply company and they would be a vendor or a contractor of the airport. Thank you so much for that explanation. Um, the next question we have here is, what is the airport's concessions program? Can you give a general overview of like the framework of the concessions program at the airport right now today? Um, we have various uh, locations that have been designated as concessions opportunities where we will do a solicitation for a company to provide a proposal on um, putting in a business that will provide the goods and services to the uh, public as they're using the airport. Um, we have, um, the car rental companies are all, the on airport car rental companies are all located in a consolidated rental car facility and they were selected through a solicitation process that was done uh, several years ago. Um, in the North Terminal, we have concessionaires who um, were selected back in 2016 through another solicitation process where we advertise the opportunity, we provide a scope of what we're looking for, and then the companies submit a proposal based upon the requirements of that solicitation. Thank you, that's very helpful. So it sounds like if I'm a small business and I've never done 
business with the airport before that I could start to prepare myself way in advance if I was interested in doing business with the airport. Am I thinking of that correctly? Um, yes, that is correct. Um, the proposals, the solicitations that we do will lay out how a proposal should be submitted. And a lot of times it's, um, it's information like um, how your how your firm operates, uh, what kind of um, customer service training they provide that you provide, what kind of safety measures you take for not just your employees but your customers, um, and a lot of that stuff you can just have ready so that you can slip it into a whole proposal package. Thank you. And so when we say this next question was, are there any upcoming concessions opportunities? Um, if I'm thinking about this year versus next year, um, are there any upcoming concessions opportunities that small businesses in the local New Orleans area could be thinking about right now? And then the second part of that question would be, if not right now, um, are there any that small local businesses may want to keep in mind for, for example, two years out or three years out? Um, in the car rental area, we do have um, the opportunity for off airport car rental permits, which are not exclusive permits so that we don't have to go through a formal solicitation process for. Um, and then in, in, in the North terminal area, we don't currently have any opportunities, but as our traffic uh, grows again, we will be looking at um, opportunities for small concession operators to come in and and provide some service or um, food and beverage or, or even news and gift type opportunities. Thank you so much. So we've covered how local firms can do business with the airport. You've told us a little bit more about the concessions program overall and thinking about opportunities. So. It sounds like the last question is the perfect way to end this is how do firms get connected to these opportunities? So I know you said that a lot of this has to do directly with the city of New Orleans. So can you explain how firms can get more information or submit um, bids or proposals um, to do business with the airport uh, specifically in the concessions program? Um, there are, are two different websites that I would recommend that you visit on a frequent basis. One is the airport's website. Um, at flymsy.com and on that website there is a section about business um, opportunities at the airport and we would list opportunities on our website that become available. The second website is the city's website. If you go to nola.gov you will see an area where it talks about um, um, a su supplier portal. It's under the bids and contracts section, and it's a brass supplier portal. And if you go into that portal and you register with the city of New Orleans on that portal, you will receive notif email notifications from the city when opportunities um, become available that fit into the um, goods and, and services that you provide. Um, you can find on the city's website a guide on how to um, to register on the brass portal. And you can also contact the airport and we'll, we will provide you with that same information. Thank you so much for your time um, today um, and all of this amazing information about how to do business with the New Orleans airport. Thank you so much. Thank you, and we hope to see everyone in the future doing business here at the airport. Thank you, Allison. This slide provides a screenshot of the supplier portal for the city of New Orleans. It's the brass system uh, that was being referenced, the budget requisition and accounting services system here. Um, you can see that there's also helpful links to purchasing and procurement and supplier FAQ. Also on the city of New Orleans brass site, you can see information for first time users, as well as um, the opportunities to bid here um, under the 
registration for first time users, you can see some of the next steps as far as registering as a supplier, understanding the terms and conditions, developing your contact information for your page and being set up in the system. And finally, you can see the solicitations page here from the New Orleans airport. Um, you can see that as well as getting that link back to the brass supplier portal, you can see direct opportunities uh, for the airport as far as invitations to bid, requests for proposals, requests for qualifications, and other information. Next, we'll hear about airport facilities opportunities at MSY. Hi, welcome to the 2021 rental car supplier diversity outreach day. My name is Chris Seckinger, facility manager at the consolidated rental car building. In short, referred to as the CONRAC at New Orleans International Airport. I'm employed by a company called MBI Field Services. MVI's corporate office is located in Nashville, Tennessee. MVI is a third party operator, which manages Conrack properties in airports across the country. Our mission is to manage airports and rental car assets to extend their life cycle while keeping them operating 24 seven so that rental car companies can focus on their core business of renting cars, of course. So here's a list of the properties that we manage across the country. Uh, at airports. There's Nashville, Tennessee, Reno, Nevada, Louisville, Kentucky, here in New Orleans, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Charlotte, North Carolina, Tampa, Florida. We'll soon be opening up our locations in Cincinnati, Ohio, and in Columbus, Ohio. And in 2023, we'll be opening up our location at LAX in Los Angeles. So, here in the New Orleans location, from the time a traveler steps off uh, one of our shuttle buses arriving at the Conrack until the time that party leaves our property, we do our best to make sure that their journey is safe, clean, efficient, and enjoyable. So after a short shuttle bus ride from the terminal, travelers arrive here at our 30,000 square foot customer service building with its beautiful terrazzo floors and glass from near the floor to the ceiling. Um, they're greeted by our welcoming customer service staff who can help uh, with wheelchair assistance if needed and answer questions. Uh, we've also got a maintenance staff that can handle any issues that may arise. Uh, we also have a stationary engineering staff uh, that's whose primary focus is on our HVAC needs. Uh, our customer service building is surrounded by uh, four levels of, of seemingly endless uh, garage space for our clients to, to utilize. But speaking of our clients, uh, on our rental car companies uh, who we partner with, you're looking at Alamo, Hertz, Avis, uh, Thrifty, Dollar, National, and Enterprise, of course. So uh, let's take a look at some of the opportunities that we have coming up in the near future for goods and services that you guys may be able to help us with. Uh, on the goods side, we're looking at janitorial supplies, Signs and banners are always uh, a necessity. Uh, tools and related supplies to those tools, uh, HVAC, plumbing and electrical supplies, aerial and boom rental rentals. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, some life safety equipment such as uh, fire extinguishers. Um, and in the near future, I'm gonna be looking for some pricing on carports, patio covers, overhangs for some ideas that we have uh, around the property. Uh, on the services side, and we're currently in a janitorial uh, contract, but uh, obviously that I don't want that to stop us from getting some uh, some some quotes from some other businesses. Um, there are uh, services we're looking for for trash removal, landscaping, uh, plants, and so forth, uh, electrical work, including lighting, parking lot repairs, pest control some HVAC services in, in addition to what our engineers can provide, uh, plumbing services, floor cleaning for that beautiful terrazzo floor I told you about, uh, as well as even some locksmiths. So let's take a look at the, the, the process. Uh, when I'm in need of a, a vendor or a contractor, my, my first step is to look at uh, the DBE directories that I have. 
to look for businesses that can fulfill that service or that uh, provide us with those goods that I'm looking for. Uh, if it becomes a, uh, a point where it is a much larger service um, or, or some, some substantial goods that we may need, it's going to go out for uh, an RFP or a request for proposal. So what we'll do is we will submit that, uh, that request for, for proposal, uh, looking for uh, vendors to come back with uh, estimates and so forth. Well, first, we're going to have them come out for a site tour, uh, review. Uh, what we're looking for, uh, show them uh, our facility and, and the scope of the work. We'll be looking for their uh, proposals. We'll take a look at those propo proposals. Uh, at NBI, we'll make the selection and then we'll negotiate the, the price uh, and the estimate. Um, if I can't find, or if I don't have any luck finding a, uh, a, D, a DBE, business um, who can fulfill that service or those goods I'm looking for, I'll typically reach out to the airport, um, their office for uh, ACDBE and see if they can help me find a local business who can supply that, that service and that good. That would be my next step if I'm, uh, if I'm unable to find uh, a local business and hopefully they're able to, to help me uh, locate someone. So here's that quick look again at uh, some goods and some services that uh, the CONRAC is going to be looking for um, over the coming months, uh, if not year. Um, I'd love for you to reach out to me, supply me with your information. Uh, if you're able to help us in any of these areas, these fields, this is my contact information. Again, my name is Chris Seckinger. I can be reached uh, at email k seconder at mviffs.com that's my first initial k and then my last name seconder s-e-k-i-n-g-e-r at mviffs.com or you can reach me through my cell at 504-628-2670 and the physical address here at the conrack is 600 rental boulevard in kenner so I'm looking forward to speaking with you, looking forward to meeting you guys uh, or, or, or anyone interested in doing business with the Conrad. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and again, thank you for, uh, for being here with us for the 2021 Rental Car Supplier Diversity Outreach Day. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful afternoon. Next, we'll hear from Avis Budget Group. Good day. My name is Stacey Avier, and I'm the Director of Operations for Avis Budget Car Rental Group in South Louisiana and Mississippi. Avis Budget Car Rental Group places significant importance on diversity in all of its endeavors, and we are very excited to continue to expand our collaborations with the DBEs across the South Louisiana area. We will continue to work closely with the New Orleans International Airport to provide support and opportunities now and in the future. The following is a list of current and future opportunities at our New Orleans International Airport locations. Sanitorial supplies, fuel suppliers, key replacements, lockout services and locksmiths, car seats, fire safety, office supplies, oil suppliers, windshield chip repair, car wash maintenance, facility repairs, vehicle upholstery repair, such as cigarette burns and holes, etc. Please all email all inquiries to Stacy Aver at avisbudget.com. That's S T A C Y dot H E B E R T at a V I S B U D G E T dot com. Or you can mail to Avis Budget Group, attention Stacy Abair at 300 Rental Road, Kenner, Louisiana 70062. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Enterprise. 
Thank you. We are very excited to be part of this event. Stephanie Landry and Carrie Russell would be local contacts for the New Orleans area for Enterprise Holdings, which represents Enterprise Rent-A-Car, National, and Alamo. Our company was founded in 1957 by Jack Taylor, and today Chrissy Taylor is our president and CEO. Locally, in addition to rental car offices, we also support our enterprise truck division, enterprise car sales, and enterprise fleet management. We look for vendors to support our needs for facility and vehicle repairs and maintenance. Please reach out to Carrie or Stephanie with any questions. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. And next we'll hear from Hertz. Good morning or good afternoon. Uh, my name is Greg Gibo. I am the general manager who oversees the Hertz and Dollar Thrifty brands here at the New Orleans International Airport. I'm excited today uh, to speak to this diversity outreach event. During today's agenda, we're gonna talk about the Hertz commitment, what we buy and how we buy it, doing business with the Hertz procurement process, spend data for 2020 and 2019, and Hertz contact information. Our commitment, the Hertz Corporation representing Hertz dollar and thrifty brands is committed to the growth of the minority women-owned and disadvantaged business enterprises hertz is both proud of and encouraged by the continued contribution we receive from these suppliers we will continue our long-standing commitment to supplier diversity by continuously engaging in the following. Creating opportunity, including DBE and ACDBE suppliers in bid events for goods and services. Maintaining a formal procedure. Mandating Hertz participation on a company-wide basis governed by policy. Corporate-wide training required supplier diversity training via our learning management system for all employees that purchase goods and or services. Reporting, provide second tier reporting to numerous national accounts on a quarterly basis. Staying engaged, active member of the Airport Minority Advisory Council the Women Business Enterprise National Council and the National Minority Supplier Diversity Council. Outreach events participate to increase awareness in our program and make connections with new DBE and ACDBE around the country. What and how we buy. Hertz's approach to procuring goods and services are done in a global, national, and regional, or sometimes local scale to allow us to meet demand, delivery, quality, and pricing to ensure business continuity. Most of our agreements cover larger volumes and geographies to leverage the buy to secure competitive pricing maintain consistency with the quality of the goods we buy and achieve their greatest service levels. Regional and local purchasing. Hertz is committed to providing opportunities to DBE and ACDBEs to increase partnerships. Below are just some of the goods and services we buy at a national and local level. These include bulk fuel, car wash and car supplies, 
body shops, janitorial services and supplies, adjusters and appraisers, automobile parts, automobile repairs, collision and paint shops, automobile detailing, towing and transportation. Procurement process. To participate in future bid events, please visit our supplier diversity page. It's attached here, the link, Hertz Supplier Diversity. If awarded a bid, and depending on the scope and the scale of the goods and or services being purchased, the procurement process generally consists of the following steps. Providing a signed W-9. Completing a supplier setup form with information about your company. Providing a copy of your ACDBE certification. Signing a master's goods and service agreement and a statement of work or price sheet. Utilizing a purchase order for invoicing and meeting certain insurance requirements. This slide talks about the spend data for 2019 and 2020. In 2019, our ACDBE spend was 19 million. Our DBE spend, which includes ACDB spend, was 1.7 billion. In 2020, the ACDBE spend was 5.3 million, and a DBE spend was 622 million. This slide is the Hertz Supplier Diversity Contacts. I am part of the Southeast region, and our contact right now for all inquiries will be directed to Shana Rutherford. Her phone number is 239-301-7308. Her email address is srutherford at hertz.com. Thank you for your time today and have a great day. Thank you. Our local event was followed by a national panel um, on rental car companies with Avis, Fox, Hertz, and Enterprise Holdings. We encouraged all participants to follow um, with the registration link here. This concludes the webinar topics for today, um, and we thank you for your attention. Good morning. My name is Philistine Ferran. I'm the DBE program manager for the Louis Armstrong Airport. Thank you for taking the time during this virtual webinar to hear from us about opportunities to do business with the New Orleans Airport. Today, we hope that you may consider current and future work with us related to airport concessions, capital projects, facilities, and especially with our car rental vendors. I encourage you to see the airport's disadvantaged business office as a resource to your firm and our small business community. Please don't hesitate to submit any questions you may have regarding the information presented in today's webinar.